Thank you. All right, today's message, uh, today's scripture comes from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. We're going to read this in the ESV, and so that the, your pew Bibles should be the ESV, or if you brought uh, your own Bible or Bible app, we encourage you to follow along. We'll be referencing the scripture throughout the message, um, but we're also going to do a... Uh, alternate reading, a responsive reading, which means that uh, I will read the first verse, we'll all respond with the verse after that, and we'll keep going back and forth until the end. And so uh, if you're ready to read the scripture, uh, please stand as able. Again, it's Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. May the Lord bless the reading of God's word for us. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him in love he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. All right, well, we are beginning our new sermon series for the fall, where we're going to be going through uh, the letter to the Ephesians, and uh, the, the whole sermon series is called The Big Story. And so we'll be talking more uh, in the coming weeks why we are talking about a big story. And it's partially because we think, I think, that perhaps the story that many of us are led to live uh, in, in contemporary life is a very small story. And I think we're all longing to be connected to the bigger story. We want to know, what is the big story? What is the will of God? We're going to be addressing those kind of big questions. What should we be living our life for? And what would it look like if we really could connect to that bigger story? And so we will be going through uh, the letter to the Ephesians. And so uh, I wanted to point out uh, just something real quick about the letter to the Ephesians. Um, so you'll see here, in, this is the very beginning uh, that we read, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God. There you see the word, the will of God. You see that a lot throughout Ephesians. We're going to be talking about that, right? And so he's very clear from the very beginning. He's writing this letter by the will of God. He is an apostle by the will of God. He's been called by Christ. To the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Christ Jesus. I don't know if you can tell here, but I put in Ephesus in italics because Actually, the earliest manuscripts that we find of uh, the letter to the Ephesians doesn't have the word in Ephesus. And so we're actually not sure <laughs> if it was written just for the Ephesians. Uh, by tradition, we call it the letter to the Ephesians, but some scholars actually think that it was a general letter that was meant for many churches. And that the stuff that's specific to the Ephesians was added later. And so that this was a more generalized letter that was kind of like a circular, you know, like it was meant to go around to every church to bless them. And I kind of like that because I feel like in many ways, this is a letter for all of us. You know, sometimes like you read one of the letters of Paul or one of the letters that's in the New Testament, and it's so specific, right? It's talking about like a very specific circumstance or specific controversy or specific kind of like issue that the people are facing. And Paul is like trying to correct that, right? But then you get some letters like this one that are a little more general, um, that it, many people, they call Ephesians a meditation on the will of God, on the nature of Christ and the nature of the church. And so I think we will see in this letter that is meant perhaps for all churches, we will see the big plan, the big picture, the big story. And so, brothers and sisters, as we kind of contrast that, like that's kind of what we are trying to do. And today's message is called the blessing life, because I think for many of us, we contrast God's story and our story, and our story so often is about chasing blessing. 
things, right? We want to be blessed. Maybe you've seen this, hashtag blessed, right? It's almost become a meme. It's become almost a joke when you see this. Like, you know, people uh, have like the most ridiculous things, like uh, had McDonald's fries today, they gave me a little extra, hashtag blessed. You're like, what? You know, or I don't know, uh, class was canceled today, hashtag blessed, right? And sometimes you'll see it in the context of sort of what is the good life? Is the good life to get some extra fries? Is the good life to have class canceled? Is the good life to be able to retire on a beautiful beach? Right? I didn't make this graphic. Someone else did. <laughs> you know, uh, to, to uh, retire on a beautiful beach and just watch the sunset every day, right? With your Mai Tai in hand, you know, with, with a beautiful person next to you, you know, having all kinds of financial security, right? Having lived a fulfilling life, being tan and healthy and having a six pack of abs and looking your and feeling your absolute best. Is that the blessed life? Is that what you're chasing? Brothers and sisters, I, I don't know what you're thinking. And so I want to encourage you to be honest with yourself. Because I think the story that you are living will dictate a lot about what your life will be, how you'll feel about it, and your destiny. And I think that, I don't think I'm going too far to say that perhaps the life that has been pitched to us as the good life, as the blessed life, isn't quite exactly the picture you see in the Bible. Am I going too far? I think it's probably fair to say that, right? That you might see some differences. And so I want us to pay attention to what those differences are. And this idea of being blessed is something that we are very obsessed with. And by the way, the word blessed appears a lot in the beginning of Ephesians. So let me show you. Right, and so we'll go back and we'll pull back and, and sort of uh, you know dig into some of these verses. But let's just see how many times the word blessed appears here. I very helpfully underlined them, and I think I missed one actually. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know what a greeting like this is usually called? Does anyone know? <laughs> Does anyone know what what a greeting like this is usually called? It's very common in the letters. It's called a blessing. Yeah, it's a blessing, right? He wants to bless the people of Ephesians, right? Uh, oh, sorry, the, the people in the city of Ephesus and possibly many other churches as well. Grace to you, peace to you, blessings, right? Be blessed in the Lord Jesus Christ, right? And then it says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing. Yes, I'm going to say blessing like that for the rest of the message, just with extra emphasis. In the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, I don't know if you guys got caught up by this, but it was so weird. Like, because we were doing alternating verses, you guys said, in love. And then we had to stop. And then I had to pick up, he predestined us. There's a reason for this. The ESV butchered this verse. And we're going to talk about, um, actually, in your Bibles, they correct it in the footnote. They tell you what the actual Greek means. But they butchered it. We'll come back to this. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ. That's a mouthful. We'll unpack that too. According to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. I missed that one. <laughs> it's all over the place, right? Blessing, blessing, blessing. You are blessed. Blessed be God. Now, what does blessing mean? What is a blessing? We all want to live a blessed life. We want to live a blessing life, hopefully. And so we need to understand what a blessing is. Maybe just some congregation participation. Does anyone know what a blessing is? It's OK if you're wrong. No one will jump down your throat or make fun of you. It will just be preserved on video for the end of time. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's totally fine. Anyone got, want to give it a stab? Just, just, just a shot in the dark. What is a blessing? What does it sound like? <laughs> uh, what's that? A gift. OK, good. A gift. You are wrong. No, I'm just kidding. No, that's right. It's a gift. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. It's a good thing, right? It's a good thing that you give to someone else, right? Not so hard, right? But brothers and sisters, I think in the word blessing 
is sort of denoted, it's not just a good gift, it's the best gift, right? You want good things for another person. When you say God bless you to someone else, you're not really giving them a physical gift, right? Someone sneezes, you're like, God bless you. Now, I heard that back in the day when people sneezed, it was a sign that you might have the bubonic plague. And so you're saying bless you because you don't want them to die, right? And you're like, whoa, that's kind of intense. I didn't realize that every time I said bless you to someone when they sneezed. Have you noticed you don't say bless you when someone coughs? You only say bless you when they sneeze? Yeah, bubonic plague, <laughs> right? You're saying bless you, I'm praying for you so you don't die, right? But brothers and sisters, in that is a hope a wish, a prayer, saying, I want good health for you, right? I want good things for you. That is what a blessing is. By the way, what is the opposite of a blessing? A curse, yeah. What is a curse? You want bad things for someone, right? You want bad things to happen to them, right? And so, you know, a curse be on you, right? And so you see in the flip of that, blessing is to say, I want really, really good things for you. Now, knowing that that is true, that that is what a blessing is, I want to point out something that's really weird, and maybe you might have noticed this. Verse 2, or sorry, verse 3, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, I just said a blessing is what? What is it? Okay, it's wanting the best for someone else, right? Desiring good things for that person, right? Isn't it kind of weird to bless God? Have you ever noticed that? You know, you might have said that before. You know, usually when we say God bless you, we, we're saying God, who is the source of all blessing, who's the source of all good, is going to bless someone else. But what does it mean to say that you bless God? It's in one of like the most popular praise songs. Uh, the 10,000 reasons. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, right? Bless the Lord. What does that mean to bless the Lord? Does that really make any sense? Oh, yeah, you want to give a stab, Daniel? Okay, to thank him. Okay. Yeah, you, you're, so you're kind of, you know, you're thanking God, but in the proper sense, it's saying you desire good things for God. Does that seem kind of odd? Has anyone ever been like, why do we bless God? I think, brothers and sisters, in this passage, you see the word blessed and blessing appear a lot. And so from the very beginning, I point it out, right? What, what is the, the, that grace and peace? What is that? It's a blessing, right? Paul wants to bless the Ephesians. And then he says, blessed be God, right? Let's bless God. And then he says, he has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing. So what do you see in this passage? Blessings are just flying everywhere, right? Bless the Ephesians, bless God even, bless all of us, right? This is what it means to live a life of blessing. This is kind of the big sell. This is the big point. If you guys are keeping notes, this is the big point that I want to make. In order to live a blessed life, you must also be a blessing. In order to live a blessed life, you must also be a blessing. This is part of the reason why God gives you the opportunity to bless him. I know it sounds kind of weird, but in the idea of blessing is something wonderful. A blessing is a good thing, possibly even the best thing. Wanting love, wanting joy, wanting peace and grace to be upon someone. But this is the problem that we have in this life, is that we think the blessings are just for us. And we think that there's a way that you can get blessing without giving blessing, right? So many, many people, right? Like, like if you search on Instagram or on, uh, you know, Twitter or whatever, hashtag blessed, you'll see millions of, of, of entries, right? Hundreds of thousands, probably even millions of entries, right? But if you do hashtag blessing or I am a blessing or, you know, like, you know, usually the blessing will be in the sense of, I want to receive blessing rather than I want to actually be a blessing. This is the message that the world is trying to tell us 
is basically blessings are scarce. This is what the world is trying to tell you. This is the story that you are all living. Remember, we're talking about the big story. What is the story that you are living? Because all of you are living a story. And I believe that the story that the world is telling you is blessings are scarce. So if you want to live a blessed life, what do you have to do? Make sure you get yours, right? Go get your blessing. Go get your money. Go get your promotion. Go get what you want. Go get your love. Go get your enjoyment, right? Because if you don't, it's going to run out. There's not going to be enough for you, right? And so we have these kind of phrases now that have entered our popular consciousness. Phrases like fear of missing out, right? What is that? It's a fear of scarcity. I'm going to miss out on a blessing. So I got to make sure that I'm able to get every blessing that is coming my way, right? This world is so much about competition, right? And so you're in a system, maybe for a lot of you, where you're graded on a curve. What does that mean? There's only so many A's we can give in this class. You all can't get A's. So about 10% of you are going to get A's. Another 10% B's. Another 10% C's. I, I don't know. I, my math is not checking out. <laughs> I'm going to run out of letters here. <laughs> Some of you guys get J's. I don't know. right? But brothers and sisters, what is the message? The top grades are scarce. Blessing will run out, right? This is why we aren't very generous people. We love the idea of being blessed. Everybody wants to be blessed. But we're not very generous people because we think, but if I give my blessing away, then where's mine? I want to live a blessed life. But if I give it away, you know, people might take advantage of me. Right? I may not have the kind of enjoyment or the kind of life I want. Right? I can't just go away, you know, giving my money away, giving my time away, right? Giving my love away. I got to concern myself with living a blessed life, right? And so, brothers and sisters, this world that we live in is distorting the picture of blessing. But here you see from the very beginning, blessings are just being, I mean, right? They're just being given freely. And when you start to see the way that Paul talks about blessing, I think you'll see that he has a different worldview. Right? He says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Now, this is a bold statement. What is Paul saying about the nature of God and what he has already done? Notice he doesn't say he will bless you with every blessing. He says he already has. Do you believe that? Do you believe that you are already blessed? Now, maybe some of you are like, Pastor Steve, that sounds good, but I, I just don't believe it. Like, you're saying that we have every blessing that is possibly available in the heavenly realms has been given to you. I didn't say it. That's what Paul says, right? Now, but, now think about it that, this way, because some of you might be thinking, but I don't feel blessed. You know, that stuff you were saying, Pastor Steve, about scarcity, I feel that every day. I feel like there's not enough. I definitely don't feel hashtag blessed. As a matter of fact, when people, you know, they, they, they tweet that or they put that on Instagram, I want to punch them in the face, right? I, I don't live a blessed life. I don't feel like I have all of these amazing things that other people have, right? Now, he is talking about spiritual blessing. But he is talking about something that is so wonderful, so much more fulfilling than the things that you may uh, be chasing. And so, you know, what about this, brothers and sisters? What if I were to tell you, you have been blessed, all of us have been blessed, but we have just been looking in the wrong place. We didn't know that it was there. Uh, so a few weeks ago, I was talking to one of my friends, and he just casually said, so this is in August, he casually just mentioned like about like uh, some gift card. I was like, gift card? What are you talking about? He's like, you know, I, I sent you an Amazon gift card, right, for your birthday, which was in July, 
right? Early July. So it's like a full month later. And I'm like, you sent me an Amazon gift card? I think I would have noticed that. He's like, no, man, I, I sent it to you. I, I just assumed that you got it. And I just assumed you were super ungrateful that you didn't ever mention it. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, I just didn't know. And so I, I searched my Gmail, and lo and behold, it was in my spam folder. Now, some of you guys are going to be going on your phones and searching your spam folders for Amazon gift cards. But I didn't know that could happen. But somehow, I see some of you actually on your phones. <laughs> I, I didn't know this could happen. But somehow, right, that this gift card, it went to my spam folder. It was there, right? I think that is actually very similar to a spiritual blessing. Because it's definitely not a physical blessing, right? Physical blessing is something you can touch, right? A spiritual thing is something that you definitely can't touch. It doesn't mean it's not real, right? I, I, I didn't know I had a blessing because I didn't physically receive it. I didn't see it. I'm like, no, you didn't give me a get Amazon gift card, right? I would have remembered that, right? I would have been like, oh, sweet, you know? Amazon gift card, I'm going to go spend this, right? But I never saw it. I never received it. I never touched it. But it was still real. It was just somewhere in cyberspace, right? It was somewhere out there, and it was waiting to be received, waiting to be redeemed. And maybe for you, brothers and sisters, for all of us, this is similar to the way spiritual blessings work. What if every spiritual blessing was available to you, but we literally just haven't redeemed it? Now, we go and we chase the physical blessings, the stuff that we have. And sometimes, you know, we'll take people and we'll take them away from the things of this world. Because we're like, I, I know we get obsessed with the things of this world. But it's not making you happy, right? It's not giving you what you think it's going to give you. I preached this message, uh, I think this a couple weeks ago. This is last week, where I talked about, like, no one has fun playing video games. Now, like maybe occasionally you're having fun, especially when you're with other people. But when I'm playing video games, most of the time I just want to throw my controller. Or I'm just like, I got, I got to get to the next thing. Like, you know, I, I got to clear the next stage, you know. And it's just like this obsession. And it's not necessarily I'm having fun, but I just feel like I have to do it. And I feel like a lot of the blessings that we have in this world are kind of like that. Where like people told us, like, it's really fun. Like, oh my gosh, you want this. Right? Um, I know some, some of the, the middle school kids were obsessed with getting phones, you know? And they were like so sad when they were like the only sixth grader who didn't have a phone. They're like, oh my gosh, you got a phone. And they're like, mom, I don't have a phone. Oh my gosh, I gotta get a phone. I gotta get a phone. I gotta get a phone. And my question was, what do you think is gonna happen when you get that phone? Do you think that like all of a sudden, just joy and peace and grace will just radiate from the heavens and you'll feel this incredible sense of happiness and joy. <gasps> I have a phone, but like, do you think that's gonna happen? Or do you think that you'll be like, oh yes, I have a phone. And then about a week will pass and you're like, yeah, I have a phone, <laughs> right? Because almost everyone has a phone, right? Who's over the age of 12 or 13, right? And they're not that happy. <laughs> I'm not that happy with my phone. Maybe I was for a moment. It's not that great. Now, if you try to take away someone's phone, you're like, oh my gosh, Pastor Steve, how dare you? How dare you take away my phone? I need my phone, right? Uh, sometimes people won't come to retreats because they know we're gonna take their phones from them. We're not gonna let them use their phones, right? And I'll tell you what, I've seen people go to retreats, no phones, no video games, right? The food there sucks. It's terrible, right? It's like the worst food you'll ever eat. It's like cardboard or just, you know, it's camp food. It's just, you know, like a step down from cafeteria food. Um, except for the camps we go to, we, we MC Casey camp, very good food. <laughs> but brothers and sisters, we're not going there for the material stuff, right? We're going there and what happens? What do you do there? What do you do at a retreat? Oftentimes what you're doing is you're just praising God. You praise God for so long, right? Sometimes, okay, I don't want to say too long, but maybe too long. It's like three hours straight praising God. You know, there's this one uh, retreat we went to <laughs> in February where, it, it, you know, it was like for youth group. And so we had kids who were like 11 years old up to 18. And it was like 1230 at night. 
And the praise had gone on so long that, um, you know, I was one of the pastors there along with some of the other churches. And I went up and I told the praise leader, hey, man, you got to cut the praise short. It's late, right? The kids got to go to bed, right? And so, you know, he gets up there and he's like, all right, guys, Pastor Steve told me <laughs> that we can't sing any more songs. I have two more songs prepared, but Pastor Steve said we can't sing them. Everyone's like, boo, Pastor Steve, boo, right? And so, you know, they're like, one more song, one more song, one more. I'm like, it's 12.30 a.m., let's go to bed. One more song, one more song. So what did I do? I made everyone go to bed. No, just kidding. <laughs> we sang one more song, right? And then after that one more song, you know, everybody knew because the praise leader told everyone he had two more songs, right? <laughs> but I told the speaker, I was like, yo, man, it's 12.45. We definitely got to go to bed, right? And I'm like, hey, can you close the service? So he goes up there. He's like, all right, guys, let's pray. But before we pray, one more song. <laughs> one. So we sang another song. It was 1 o'clock. It's 1 o'clock. And then people were like, hey, can we stay and get, you know, the, the, uh, one of the pastors was like, if you guys want to stay and pray, you can. I'm like, what? It's 1 a.m. Make them go to bed, right? And he's like, no, people can stay and pray. And so they did. Some people stayed for like an hour praying. No phones, no video games, no money, right? Why? Why? Because it is more blessed to be a blessing. I know we think that we're receiving in that situation, but what are you really doing? You're there and you're worshiping God. Why do we bless the Lord? We bless the Lord because you are blessed when you are blessing, right? And one of the things that is happening is when you are obsessed with your own blessing, you become a one-way street. The blessings come in, can't get back out, right? And you may get blessed for a little bit, right? I mean, everyone gets blessed when they receive a blessing. When someone gives you something, when someone you know, tells you you're awesome, and you're like, thanks, and you feel good for like about 15 minutes. Maybe if the blessing is really incredible, you'll feel good for about a day. And then after a while, it fades away. This is what all blessings are like. Unless you learn to give blessing, and then you become a two-way street. Have you guys ever heard of um, the uh, uh, Red Sea? Uh, oh, sorry, not the Red Sea, the Dead Sea. Uh, it rhymes. The Dead Sea, uh, it, it's in between uh, Jordan and Israel. And uh, it's a very famous uh, sea in the Bible. It's never called the Dead Sea in the Bible. It's called the Sea of Salt. And it's one of the saltiest seas uh, in, in the world. And so the Dead Sea actually is at the lowest point I heard on Earth that is above water. So on ground, um, it is the lowest elevation on Earth. And so what happens is that there are uh, uh, tributaries, there are rivers that will flow into the Dead Sea. But because it's, it's so low, that the water flows in, but it cannot flow it out. It just gets stuck there, right? And the reason why we call it the Dead Sea is so much salt builds up. And so you see here uh, on the shores here, that's salt, right? So it looks like rock, but there's so much salt that it forms these like crystalline structures. It's so salty that nothing can live. There's no plant life. There's no uh, animal life. Everything dies. That's why we call it the Dead Sea. And this is what happens with blessings when you are only in a receiving mode. When you are only receiving blessings and blessings are not flowing out of you, then those things start to die. You start to die. Brothers and sisters, if you don't believe me, look at America. Seriously, I mean, just consider this. We have never been more rich. We have never had more technology. We have never had more gadgets or stuff, right? I don't know, maybe some of you, <laughs> going on the video game thing again, you know, part of me, but I don't know, maybe you, you only have like a PlayStation 2. Man, they're on PlayStation 4 now. Mom, when am I gonna get a PlayStation 4? I have a PlayStation 2. Nobody has a PlayStation 2. I'm not blessed, right? They're hashtag blessed, I'm not. Brothers and sisters, can you imagine going back to biblical times with a PlayStation 2? 
He'd be like, what? What is this? <laughs> right? This is sorcery. You have more blessing than most of the world in their history has ever had. Are you happier? Are you happier than the people before? Right? So many people in America are concerned with getting theirs. And you know what we find in America? We've never been more depressed. We've never been more overweight. We've never been more anxious, right? We've never been more selfish because we're keeping the blessings for ourselves. It's like this. There is one door into your heart, and this is the way it works. You might think, I'm just going to open the door for blessings. Blessings come in, and then boom, that's it. Nothing comes back out, right? That's not what the way blessings work. Right? That's not the way your heart works. If you close the door to blessings going out, you're also closing the door to blessings coming in. And so in this world, what we have is we have a God who has given you every, every spiritual blessing. And I mean every spiritual blessing. He has given you the greatest blessing. And that is the blessings that we have in Christ. And so... I just want to point out a, a couple of these things. Um, so remember, I, I talked about how the ESV is a terrible, <laughs> does a terrible job here. So it says, uh, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. There's no period there. Actually, verses 3 through 14 is one hugely long run-on sentence. <laughs> because Paul is trying to make one point. He's trying to tell you about the big Plan and the big idea. So there's no periods here. We put in periods because it's so long and we try to make it more comprehensible. And the ESV, unfortunately, they actually changed the meaning of this passage, right? And so um, if you see the footnote, uh, there is a footnote in your Bibles probably that tells you or. And by the way, if you guys haven't been in a, a LGM message before, whenever it says or and it doesn't say some manuscripts, some ma manuscripts mean some manuscripts. Some say it, some don't. But when it says or, they're telling you the literal Greek translation. Because the literal Greek translation is really hard to read sometimes. It doesn't make sense in English. So they change it, they interpret it to make it sound better to your American ears, to your Western ears, but they want to preserve the Greek, and so the footnote will say or, right? And so the or says this, and, and so I, I just put it together the way that it's actually in the Greek. So what it actually says is it doesn't have full stop before love. It says, he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and blameless, which means without blemish. It means like a perfect fruit or flower that hasn't been bruised, right? It's just perfectly preserved um, before him in love. So what he's saying that he chose us, the plan was to make us perfect, to make us holy, before him in love. Now, this is important because I think for a lot of us, we put the emphasis just on us. Oh, God wants to make us perfect, right? And then we put the emphasis on sin, right? Like, oh, you know, I'm not perfect when I sin. But the emphasis here is in love. What Jesus is trying to perfect, the big plan is about making your love perfect. This is the big plan. Right? If you don't believe me, we're going to keep on going here. right? So he predestined us into adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ. It's a very awkward Greek phrase that we have a hard time translating because sonship makes no sense. We don't know what that means. But the reason why it's sonship and it sounds so sexist is because in order to be a full heir, you had to be a son. And so the idea is that men and women could get the full rights of an heir of, of the father that Jesus himself had, right? Because Jesus is the son. He gets everything from the father. This is another way of saying that you have been adopted, grafted into the family of God, and you get everything that Jesus has, right? Every spiritual blessing, you see that? You are a full heir. You are a son and daughter of God who gets everything. Right? But it is according to the purpose of his will. There's that word again. What is his will? Right? Don't you want to know? I want to know. My curiosity is piqued. 
to the praise of his glorious grace in with, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. Jesus is the beloved. You are given the same status as Jesus. That's what adoption to sonship means. Right? So you also are the beloved. He's trying to perfect your love. He's trying to make you like Jesus. This is one of the questions I ask people. Do you think Jesus was sad? <laughs> Do you think he was dour? Do you think he was depressed? Jesus was like, got to die for these stupid people. I got to do another miracle. Dude, seriously, think about it. Do you think Jesus' life was blessed? People would say, blessed be to the son of David, right? They'd say stuff like that. Blessed be to you. Do you believe that Jesus was blessed? Do you want to live a life like Jesus? Because this is his will for you, for you to be like Jesus, right? So in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace. The word riches in Greek is very interesting. It just means wealth. It's not a special spiritual word. It's the word that you use for wealth. If we, if we said that somebody was very, very wealthy, we would say Plutos, which is the same word there, right? Um, that Pluto was the god of wealth. And so it's saying that you are wealthy in grace. There it is again. God is giving you every spiritual blessing, everything he's giving to you. I think often when we think about the life we have in Christ, we think we're giving something up. This is what the world is telling us. You know, you're going to be like, uh, I don't know, have you ever seen like, uh, you know, like Ned Flanders from The Simpsons? He's like kind of square. You know, he's like a loser and no one likes him. You know, he's just too holy. You know, and we look at that and we're like, you're going to be missing out. Or, you know, think of all the fun that people who don't have to live like Jesus are having at Necto or, or wherever. I don't know. I don't know where people hang out. Right? You can be a Christian at Necto, by the way. You know, that's, that's for a different message. But, but this is what we think. We think we're missing something. You're missing out. You're not getting enough. You're living a life of scarcity. You have to sacrifice all this stuff. And what Paul is saying is that if you are living the blessed life in Christ, you have everything. He's given you everything. Jesus wasn't walking around saying, man, I wish I could have lived like Herod. I wish I could have lived like those sinners over there. I wish I could have been a tax collector. Jesus was Jesus. He was most blessed. He had everything. This is the kind of life that I want. This is the kind of life that I think you want. And yes, we are really good in the church with receiving grace, receiving forgiveness. But remember, blessing is a two-way street. You got to keep receiving it, but you got to keep giving it too. You have to become a person of grace. If you receive mercy, you have to become a person of mercy. If you receive forgiveness, you have to become a forgiving person. If you are a blessed person, then you have to be a person of blessing. That's how you get it all, right? We live in this world where God's grace is infinite. It's not scarce. It's not like, oh, man, only the Baptists get blessing. <laughs> only the Methodists. Oh, they get more. No, his blessings are unfathomable. They're ever flowing. They're there for you to receive and then for you to give. So what is the big plan? What is the big idea? Where are we going with all of this? What is God's will for you? We'll talk about that next week. <laughs> Seriously, we'll talk about it next week. We don't have enough time. You know, there's so much to talk about. Okay, I'll just give it to you real quick, right? Because he tells you. He actually tells you. Verse 9, Chandra kept reading because the sentence didn't stop, right? Verse 9, we just wanted to read it. We'll, we'll go over the whole thing next week, but just for Chandra, we'll do it, okay? <laughs> so she really wanted to read it. So, so we stopped here. He lavished upon us the riches of his grace in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will. Don't you want to know the will of God? It's right here. It's right here. This is the big story. According to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. This is the big idea. This is the plan. This is what we should all be living for. 
You're like, but what does that mean? Next week, we'll talk about it more, <laughs> next week, right? But suffice it to say, if you are united to people, brothers and sisters, what does that mean? It, it means that there's no more us and them. It means there's no more, hey, this is mine, that's yours. The blessings are meant to be showered upon all people. The blessings get bigger. The blessings get magnified when you share them together. Have you ever had a blessing and you just kept it to yourself? You're like, oh man, I'm going to share this meal, or I'm going to eat this meal, and no one else gets it. I'm just going to, because I like it, right? It's great. It's great. You like it, but then it's gone. What happens if you share that meal? What happens if, if you invite your friends like, oh man, my mom sent me some kalbi. Let's grill it up. And let's eat it, right? Now, the part of you, the world tells you, no, there's not enough kalbi to go around, right? Just eat it for yourself. you got to get your kalbi. And so you don't invite anyone. You eat it, you enjoy it for about five minutes, then you poop it out and it's gone. <laughs> but what happens if you share the kalbi? Do you guys know what kalbi is? It's Korean ribs. It's really good. Highly recommend it. But share it with other people. And what happens? They're like, oh my gosh, Steve, thank you so much. You laugh. You have this great remembrance, right? You have a great memory that you can go back on and say, remember the time when we had Steve's mom's kalbi? It was delicious. It was so good. Do you remember the stories we told? It's a blessing that ripples. Maybe they remember. They're so touched by you sharing that kalbi. Oh, that was precious kalbi. So the next time they get kalbi, what do they do? They share it too. Do you see it, brothers and sisters? This is the life. It is not a solitary life. You are not a solitary individual living in a stingy, dangerous world where you got to get yours. You live in a world of blessing because you live in the world of God. He wants to share the blessing with you so that you can share it with others. And one of the things that we can do First and foremost, well, okay, so there's three things. So we're just going to end with this, okay? Three things. I want to encourage you every day to apply this. Remember, the blessings were flying around in the beginning of Ephesians. But who were they flying to? To the Ephesians, to the other people that Paul was writing to, to Paul himself, and to God. So every day, brothers and sisters, I encourage you, don't just be the person, hashtag blessed, it's all about me, right? Be the person who wants to be a blessing. Some of you, you're really good at that. You're just thinking about other people all the time, and you're never thinking about yourself. The truth is, you have to get blessed too, right? Because if this blessing thing is what I think it is, it's huge, it's big, it's meant to envelop everyone. You can't be like, okay, you enjoy your blessing, okay? You're all blessed, but I'm going to stand over here and not be blessed. Stop being a martyr, okay? God wants to bless you too, because if he can bless you, then you can bless other people. So one of the things that I started doing in my prayers is I spend a lot of time blessing other people. But one thing I didn't do is I didn't pray for blessings for myself. I don't know why. Maybe I just thought like, like oh man, you know, this world, people are just so obsessed with blessing themselves. But do you see the wrongness in that thinking? Because my thinking is like, oh, i got to preserve all the blessings for my family and friends and church. Pastor Steve, don't get no blessing, right? No blessing for you. That's living in a world of scarcity, right? Not in a world of the riches of God's grace. So you get some too. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. There's enough for everybody. It's overflowing. So pray for yourself. Bless yourself. But don't just bless yourself. Pray for other people. Bless other people. Every day, brothers and sisters, I, I would encourage you, bless God, bless yourself, and bless other people. It's a good day, isn't it? I think that's a wonderful day if you could do those three things every day. Praise team, can you come up? And uh, let, let's, let's actually apply this. So I want to begin, not with ourselves, but with God. So I want to give you a moment to just bless God. How do you do this? You just say cool things about God, <laughs> right? You say true things about God. God, you are love. God, you're awesome. Thank you for the breath of my lungs. Thank you that I was able to find a church to worship at this morning. Thank you for maple bacon donuts that Josh Na brought from Lansing. Did you know he brought those donuts all the way from Lansing? Special donuts. Thank you. It's awesome. <laughs> Thank you, God, for the generosity of people. 
God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you that he died on the cross for me, that all my sin is taken away. I don't have to think about managing all of that. The grace is just overflowing, right? Thank you so much. Let's, uh, can we get some kind of mood music? Yeah. I just, it feels more spiritual this way. Let's just take a moment and can we just bless God. to necessarily do it right per se. Yeah, I think this is what we were made for, to bless God because you were made to bless. Let's, let's do that first, brothers and sisters, and we'll move on so, to some other things we can pray for. God, we thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We lift you up on high. Thank you so much, God, for your infinite love that we cannot measure. Thank you, God, so much for this community where we can share your love, where we can show your love, that we can be your love. Thank you so much for Jesus. Thank you so much for sending him to die for us, God. Thank you so much, Lord, that we have redemption in you, that there is always hope in this world. Let's take a moment also to pray for yourself. Let's pray that you can be blessed because God wants to bless you. He wants to give you good things. Did you know that? Not just good things. He wants to give you the best. Sometimes what we want isn't God's best. You know, we get stuck there. We get stuck in these selfish little places where we, we don't even want to reveal that to God because we just want what we want. But can you trust this God enough to say, God, give me what you desire. Not necessarily what I want, but give me your best. Give me your best. Bless me. So let's just take a moment to pray that. You don't have to be apologetic. You don't need to hedge that in any way. You can just say, God, I know your desire is to bless. Can you bless me? Let's pray that. God, may you bless me. To all the people in this place, God, that we will not shy away from knowing that we are a people of blessing. That you are an infinitely generous God. There is a death Lord, I know you have good things in store. You are holy, Brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you right now to pray for someone else. My hope and desire at LGM is you don't just come and you hear a, a message that inspires you. But you find a community that you can connect to. You find people that you can love. So could you pray for one person that you met today? It could be the person sitting next to you. Somebody that you just met for the first time. Pray for Jesus. Pray for Grace. Pray for Susan. Pray for uh, Emily. Whoever you met today, maybe just a name comes to mind. You just bless them. You don't have to know exactly how to pray for them. That's a beautiful thing about blessing. You are praying for it. It's God's best for them. So just picture them. Picture their face. And then just lift them up to God. And just say, God bless them. And in that is that desire. God, give them your very best. Can we take a moment to bless someone that you met today? Here at LGM. Let's pray. God, I just want to thank you so much. God, I'm so glad to be this brother. I pray that you will bless him. Wherever he's going in life, whatever you have for him, God. I pray, God, you will be the best one. someone that you've been in an argument with. Um, maybe there's someone that you just haven't thought of for a while, but you just you used to be really close, but it's just gotten really cold. You know, maybe there's someone that you need to forgive, someone who has wronged you, someone who wronged you. Let's just take a moment to bless that person. This is what we were made for, brothers and sisters. This is living into the big story, learning to be a blessing, as we have been blessed, to keep this flow of blessing going. And so let's pray for our enemies. Let's pray for those we've wronged. Let's pray for those who've wronged us. Let's pray for those that we're estranged from. Let's pray for those that we've neglected. Let's take a moment and bless one of those people or several of those people. Let's pray. God,
God, we thank you, Lord, for this time of blessing. We want to live a story of life, of blessing, where we are blessed in your infinite grace, and we learn to give that grace in return. We learn, God, that that is the greatest gift, to be generous people, to live in this world, God, where we know that you are real, that you are love, and we live in that constant flow of your love, God, for the rest of our lives. Until you take us to be perfectly joined to you, God, that we can live a life of blessing, being blessed and blessing others in return. Thank you, God. We pray all these things in Jesus' name.